Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some World Painter action. Obviously I'm not in World Painter at the moment, I just wanted to do a quick render of the map so that you could see where I am and uh, how the terrain is coming along so far. Uh, if you don't remember we are working on Pike, which is uh, this island right here, uh, the place that this castle will be built on, and right now I'm at a place called Lord's Port. This is the location we'll be building the port on the island. Um, in the World Painter series. So I just wanted to show you uh, just how the terrain is so far by what we have on the map. And I'll go back to the World Painter program uh, and map in a few seconds. But I, just so you understand what we have to achieve with the map, um, uh, it's better to actually sometimes load the program uh, or load the map into Minecraft uh, multiple times, uh, sections of the map, so that you could see uh, the effects of what you're doing because it's hard to get an idea when you're in world painter what exactly you're doing so if you remember we have uh, all these uh, sort of random uh, sort of randomly generated terrain because we kind of just went over with the raise tool and raised the island out of the water instead of actually like planning out where hills and stuff were gonna go and we did this kind of haphazardly and it's given us a variety of terrain it's a little bit higher on the edges and I feel as if we go as we go inland it will be uh, a little bit lower um, and, uh, as you can see, there's some decent looking hills. They're not too bad, and I actually kind of like how those look. But, uh, we need to, um, add cliffs to this coast, because this is supposed to be an incredibly stony island. And as you can see from this image, and some of the other images of the locations where they filmed the, uh, the island of Pike, you can see that there's watery cliffs, uh, coastal cliffs all over this place, and... It's kind of be kind of difficult because here you can see that the cliffs are kind of a normal grayish stone, maybe a little bit darker down here, and uh, in uh, an image like this one or this one, you could see that the cliffs are actually really white, and I'm having difficulty figuring out whether I want the cliffs to be the dark stone from the Conquest texture pack or a light stone from the Conquest texture pack, and maybe you guys can help me out with that. Uh, depends if I post the video early enough before I start painting the terrain. Um, but yeah, so it's good to check the terrain that you're creating multiple times before you actually export it, because if you're working on a big map and you lose track of things, you can actually end up with big problems post-production of your map, post-exportation, and uh, it'll it'll be a, a significant, uh, you know, hit to, like, your time spent and, you know, uh, whether it was a, a waste or not. Um, if you check under the water, you could see that the harbor area is a little bit more uh, raised uh, and it slowly slopes down into the ocean and seabed and it continues to slope for quite a bit as you can see all the way over here it's still sloping down and that's pretty good we wanted that to happen uh, over here is the uh, the edge of the map that I exported it goes on for quite a while and it could actually uh, sink even lower let me get down here and find out yeah it sinks a little bit lower in some places not so much in other places um, so yeah, that's definitely, you know, uh, pretty good, the way we handled uh, the seafloor and stuff. And it actually makes it look really nice, uh, especially if you can actually see the underwater pieces of land. So I'm going to jump back into World Painter, and we're going to continue with building the coastline. And uh, we'll see how that's made and how I go about making cliffs and stuff. Alright, so we're back in World Painter, and as you can see, this area right here is about the size of the area that I exported into Minecraft. Um, as you can see, it's got the uh, the entire harbor bay shape uh, going on right there. Uh, it shouldn't be too big, because you actually don't notice that on the maps that you should see of, uh, of Pike. Um, but uh, that's where Lord's Port is going to be, over there by the bay. Uh, as you may remember, down here is Pike, the castle. This will probably be the highest area of the terrain. And uh, up here we have um, another place called Ironholt, which, as I understand it, may be the only place with either trees or a mine on this island. I could be wrong, and there sh certainly are probably more mines on these islands. Um, but that's uh, the main three places that we will be building after this entire map is done. But what we need to do is we need to make these coastal areas have quite a decent number of cliffs. Like I said, there's no safe harbor 
at this island save for Lordsport, and that's only because the terrain around it is a little bit uh, nicer for a harbor to be established in the first place. Of course you can have docks and little fishing villages, but there's no place to put big ships other than that island. Um, so over here we have you know the contour lines show oh my god i just zoomed into like the fucking face of that dirt like i just planted right there <laughs> my bad um right here we could see the contour lines and I, if you remember we set these to uh, be uh apart at 10 blocks each so every 10 blocks you'll see another contour line and uh, it tells you how high and low the terrain is along with the uh the shadowed and highlighted edges of the uh, the actual blocks themselves, which you can see all over the place. Um, what we want to do is we want relatively low cliffs, not too crazy, it doesn't have to be crazy, it doesn't have to be something like the Cliffs of Dover, but we want things like this all around the island. We want these cliffs to extend up into the island a little bit. They can go higher, they can go lower, but we want this type of cliffy terrain on the edge. And behind those cliffs, we want relatively smooth grass. The only issue is that this place is supposed to be very rocky so those rocks might actually turn out or that grass might actually turn out to be rocky in the end when we go back and look over this and see if we like what we got um, because I'll probably be exporting a section of this map afterwards and showing you how that turned out so we want to make sure that you know there's relatively decent amount of grass but the grass is just that it's grass there's not really much soil beneath it it doesn't have to be thick so we can find um you know, a way to make it look as if it's still not very good land for farming and stuff. And we could probably do that by throwing in some jagged rocks every now and then, or jagged terrain. So, coming back to this, I'm going to grab the flatten tool, which is over here. Uh, this will allow us to flatten sections of land at once. As you can see, if I just hold it, it will make everything flatten to the shape of my brush. And if we look at uh, the 3D view and scroll on down could see that there's now a fine piece of terrain with a very sharp edge not perfectly sharp uh, at the top it rounds out a little bit and that's just because the brush is smoother on the edges than it is in the center um, if you uh, would like to use my brushes they'll be available for available for download in in the description and you can uh, download all the brushes that I'm using I'm going to be using this one uh, I don't know if it's gonna be called the same thing when you download them it should be it's called cliff 5 um, this is just a, a, a brush that I use to make these types of jagged cliffs and mountains as well. So we're going to come up here around uh, this contour line, which is up here, and just drag this out. And we don't have to be perfect with this. We want to just get like a, an idea of where these cliff edges are going to go. Don't have to be, uh, you know, the same height either. If we want, we can extend this hill so that it comes out and meets the ocean as well and that'll be about 20 blocks high uh, or so and as you can see that's a bit decent uh, cliff right there and don't worry about the fact that we were flattening these areas out behind it because we'll go over that in a, a separate moment a separate time and make all this terrain look a little bit more natural but right now we just want to add these cliffs to the edge and I'll show you how you can do that in multiple ways now obviously you can use the flatten tool like I just have another technique which is kind of uh, something you have to feel around with is um, actually uh, now that I realize that the brush settings at zero uh, percent or fifty percent so let me turn that up to 100 percent and I'll show you that one more time just so you get an idea of how far out these cliffs come and how quickly you can make some decent cliffs they're not amazing cliffs I'll, I'll, I'll be honest they're not perfect yet but you can see just how quickly we can come in here and make some really crazy looking uh, edges to this terrain and if you look here you could see that that's forming a pretty decent looking cliff right there and a smaller one is there beneath it another decent and pretty good way of making cliffs is actually doing the opposite and that's digging into the terrain so if we take this uh this brush here maybe and uh, we actually do the same thing with the flatten tool except we dig into the cliff that we just made it'll help define that edge a little bit more and make it a little bit more steep when we come back over here you'll see that it has shrunk this back but it has also made it a lot steeper um that's a pretty good and useful tool if you want to get back into a cliff and make it steeper but the only downside is it just flattened this entire coastal area and what you want to do after that is you want to take one of these brushes again preferably a jagged one not one of these up here the not not one of the regular world painter brushes but a custom brush and you just want to go over the terrain once more and 
make it a little bit rough. And uh, like I said, these areas are going to be very rough. The cliff brushes that I have included, these three right here, the cliff six, cliff five, and cliff seven that I use are very jagged brushes. And when you hold them down, they create very jagged pieces of terrain, as you can see right there. Those black lines and all those sharp edges on that terrain shows you just how sharp and rough it is. So I'm going to get rid of that, but as you can see, this coastal area is looking a little bit more, you know, dangerous now. And it's not so smooth, and it's possibly turning into something pretty good. So we're going to go around the entire island and add these cliffs. And uh, once we're done with that, for some reason I can't move. There we go. Um, once we're done with that, I'm going to uh, come back into Minecraft and show you the effects of what I have just done. And you'll be able to see uh, just how uh, decent of a coastal cliffside we can make. Don't be afraid to make massive areas of land jutting out like this that's it's good it'll help make your terrain look nice especially when we come in and paint it don't re don't forget though to leave some areas for beaches especially where it gets low where you've already got randomized terrain making this uh, area low for example over here we don't have to put cliffs on this edge we can have cliffs going around this place and uh down here and stuff uh, another thing that you can use to make cliffs look a little bit more natural is to actually shrink down the size of your brush so it's very small it's, and it only covers about the the edge of the water to the very highest point of your cliff or wherever the edge of your cliff is on the lowest point and you just click and what that'll do is it'll give it a more natural eroded looking shape this is very good for canyons and in the future i might be able to show you a better video explaining this but it'll it'll cut away some of the top layers of your cliff and it'll make it seem as if those areas have eroded down kind of like a grand canyon effect where there's like a tier uh, of where it gets thicker in, in the canyon walls um at the, near the bottom of the, the the canyon itself or the cliff itself um so it gives a nice impression of erosion uh just by using your cliff button again when you do that of course this works a lot better with bigger cliffs and canyons but uh it still gets the uh, same effect and you actually do see this in game it's quite astonishing how much of the effect you see in game uh even from here you can't really tell what the heck i just did but um it actually turns out pretty decent in game and i'll show you that in uh, minecraft 2 when i export them I uh, I actually forgot to mention, um, instead of just dragging this and pulling into a cliff, if you want, you can actually just tap. Tap real quick. It'll give you an amazing effect and with minimal effort. Um, if we come over here and we just look at this, uh, this, this side of the map that I just created, all the way over here, you'll see some crazy cliffs. And it, it actually looks pretty great. We just gotta wait for this to all load in. And I do apologize if my voice is going a little bit freakishly crazy right now. But I'll show you the cliffs over here. If you can see those edges, they actually look really good. And I'll show you those in-game. When we paint that terrain, those cliffs are going to be pure stone. There's not going to be any grass on them because of how steep it is. And it's going to look amazing. I'm going to raise that terrain a little bit. But I just wanted to show you that you can actually just throw in like 10 cliffs all stacked and next to each other with minimal effort just by tapping with a cliff brush um, that I'm going to be supplying you or any custom brush that you make on your own. Um, like I, I, I grabbed this uh, small cliff one down here, right? And I just tap, tap, right? Especially with it into the ocean, bam, right there. You can see all those hard edges the brighter that line is, or the darker that line is, the, the more steep it is. And it's just showing you just how insanely good you can get some terrain with just a minimal effort. And it's really good if you just come over here and do the same thing on this side. With minimal effort, you can create some really nice, rocky, just fucked up landscape that nobody wants to try and climb and stuff I think it just looks great so I'm gonna continue using that I completely forgot about that technique but there you go have it eat it 
consume that shit, and uh, I'll see you on the map when I'm done with this terrain. Alright, now I have exported the map, or a section of the map, into Minecraft. I will overlay an image of where I actually am on the map so that you can see what the terrain looks like from World Painter and how it translates into Minecraft when you export the map. Uh, this is very close to what we're looking for. Um, I'm going to end the episode soon because these are supposed to be short episodes, but you can see how quickly we made very sharp cliffs using the techniques I showed. Uh, of course, these cliffs and their, you know, the way they fo oh my god, I just went through like the fucking mouth of that squid. Um, the, the cliffs extend into the water and that's uh, basically, um, you know, either a drawback of this uh, technique or uh, an additional, like a uh, technique of this technique. I don't know how to word it, but either it's a benefit or not to you. But um, I think these cliffs are pretty close to what we want. In the future, uh, like I said, we aren't done with this area and I'll be going over some of this land because this is actually close to a, one of the castles, I believe. Uh, let me just uh, continue to fly around here while I get a scope of this place. But in the future episodes, um, we will be expanding on the terrain on the inside of the island instead of just the coastal areas uh, we'll be adding details like rocks and stuff to the uh, coastal areas here's a, a decent looking beach but I, I have a feeling i'm going to be raising this because this doesn't look tall enough i don't remember where this beach is but i feel like i'm there should be a taller area here i think i went north yes i did so this is uh the peak of this uh the uh the uh, island here and uh, I think right here we're starting to see some uh, taller cliffs um, more broad cliffs they're not broken up into smaller segments there is just a flat up cliff against the coastal area now here is supposed to be the location of a tower um, it's called Iron Holt on this island uh, you don't actually see it in Game of Thrones the sh show and it's not really described in the books either from what I can understand so that leaves it entirely up to my interpretation now I believe it's just a single tower with a town built around it and I the tower is most likely the um, Lord's home uh, so I think I'm going to put this as like a tower on the edge of this uh, this coastal uh, landscape this these coastal cliffs here and we'll make a nice uh, town on the edge of the edges of these cliffs and maybe a small stairway or a way down to the cliffs at the bottom with a, a boat or two because they really wouldn't have docks located on cliffs these tall what we're going to do in the future episodes like i said is we're going to raise the terrain on the inside of the island right now the highest parts of the terrain are actually the coasts because of the way we did our cliffs we raised the terrain around the coasts using the flatten tool so that the terrain on the edges of the water was really tall like it is here um it's about 30-ish blocks taller than the water is in some places. And uh, we need the... Uh, in in middle parts of the island to be taller. We need them to see more mountainous than they are. And we have plenty of room to do that. I'm only on... Uh, let's see. I'm only on Y83. The tallest these cliffs get in this area is Y90. Um, so that's a 30-foot drop in a cliff uh, at, the, at the most. Um... So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to raise the uh, land on the inside of this, uh, these coastal areas and basically make it more rocky and mountainous on the inside. Some places will have it a little bit smoother, but in general, you're going to be seeing these types of cliffs everywhere. Uh, and the purpose of that is because uh, I'm sticking at, as I'm sticking to the books and the show as accurately as I can. Um, and this island is supposed to be very bad for farming. It's supposed to be having rocky soil, and it's not really got much, uh, uh, you know, viable uh, farm space uh, that's that's really um, going to let you grow any crops or anything. And uh, I believe the best way of conveying that is to just make this place rocky as fuck and, you know, not not exactly the the coolest looking place for like farms and shit uh maybe mines i might do some mines but um from what i understand uh that is like the one import of these islands or the one export major export was the the iron mines which, which is why they're called the iron islands i suppose um makes sense so anyway 
these are uh, the coastal cliffs. In the future, we will be painting these. They will look a lot better when they're painted. And of course, we're still sticking with dirt because we don't want any, you know, other types of uh, terrain or materials getting in here uh, until we're ready to get painted with this terrain. Uh, so I, I do apologize if they don't seem perfect to you. And I, like I said, they're not finished yet. When we start adding up the layers of the terrain on the inside, these cliffs are going to get a little bit smoothed out on the top. And that's a pretty good thing because uh, these sharp edged cliffs that go straight down aren't exactly good we don't want those um we want cliffs that are a little bit a little bit more rough and not so straight cut uh, um, in some places that's okay some places that's not but only if the cliff is short enough when it's tall enough that you can see the rock underneath the cliff uh, the rock underneath the dirt uh, that's not good and that's that's something we're going to try and avoid of course painting will help this process and help clean that up and make it look a lot better but uh, right now we don't want that so that's all for this episode in the next episode we'll be going over uh mountainous terrain and the inside of this land the uh the actual like you know mainland of this island and uh we'll be adding some uh, details to the coast like rocks and stuff and quick tips for touching up this terrain i don't think i'll be continuing much with the terrain making any longer after that it's going to go on to uh biome painting and tree placing and that's pretty much it and then we're going to start the build of the castles and the towns so thanks for watching comment rate favorite subscribe tell me what you think of this stuff so far um i think the fucking music is playing so um let me turn that down so that you can hear my legit as fuck music that i put at the end of my videos and i'll see you guys next time